Okay, so today I'm going to discuss a bit of thread painting and I like to do it where I have um, a picture behind it, a photo. As you can see, um, I've got a photo printed out on photo paper and then I have photo fabric, sorry, and then I've uh, stitched over the top to create a bit of added texture. Um, I've also added on it a stabilizer, it's like a um, a uh, handbag stabilizer bag batting and you can see I've just you know I'm going to back it with something else but um, it gives it a lot of, of texture and you can see all the shadows still in the uh, in the water so today what I'm going to do is discuss how this process works so first things first you print out on your photo paper uh, depending on what size you have. Okay, so once you've got your printable fabric, which is a, it's like a fabric on one side and shiny on the other, and that's that's protecting it so that it can go through the uh, printer. And you literally take that off. They can hear my cat in the background. You can you take that off after you've printed it. It prints on this side. As you can see, I started printing and then cancelled, so I can print over that again another time, and then. You print out your photo, you take that plastic off, and then I stitched it down on some bag batting, just loosely, like a basting stitch around the edge, just to hold it flat. And it means that um, any bobbin that I use is pretty much not going to come up to the top unless I really adjust my tensions. And it means that you've got some really good stabilizer there. It's not going to bubble and carry on. As you can see, this is quite flat. This one here. I crunched it up the other day in my bag, but it is quite flat and um, and with an iron it'll come out even nicer. Uh, you can practice on the side if you cut out your bag batting a little bit um, a little bit bigger, so that you can see how you want to make the stitches look. The main two stitches I use are a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch. So I tend to look at the photo and I think, okay, well, what I'm going to start with first. And I normally start with the darkest part of it first. So the first part I'm going to start with is the trees. And I'm going to do those lines and shadows in here. I'm most likely going to do a little bit of a sky, but I'm going to keep it um, almost original to the photo just so that it, it sort of brings that colour through. Um, I don't want to sort of lose the, the texture of the photo either. So first things first is to audition your, your threads and if I just move over here a fraction you can see I've got quite a few fre threads, threads, threads that I've chosen. Um, they might not look right when you look at them now but once you place them on they tend to blend in. You'll see that they come blend in or come close and then you've got the the charcoal grey and you can see that that's going to blend in nicely as well. So I do that with each and every colour so that I can get choose all these colours. I need low lights and highlights and I need some ones in the middle as well just to give it a bit of um, a bit of texture and a bit of colour. Like this one here, I've got low lights, I've got highlights and then I've got ones that are in the middle. Same with the greens, low lights and highlights. And you can see in here too. Okay, so what I'll do, and these are unknown photographers, I did um, print them out a while ago and I can't remember who they are, um, just remember that if you ever do any artwork to always acknowledge who you've got the photo from or picture from so that you're uh, not um, interfering with their, their income and, their, and uh, copyright laws. So first things first, I'm going to go with this grey really deep dark grey and you notice I'm not really doing black um, because black is a shade not a colour same with white my highlights are most likely going to be in this sort of colouring or this one okay so I've got my machine set up for free motion quilting which means my feed dogs are down my foot is a free motion foot. You can take your foot off. I can show you how to do that as well and just have it um, free floating. And I also um, adjust my tension up to around about a five. 
So if I'm going to take my foot off, I might need my little screwdriver because I did overdo it earlier. If I've left it in here. I'll go find my screwdriver and I'll be right back. Okay, so I found the screwdriver. Well, I'm just going to tighten that back up. I don't know if you can see there that my arm's in the way. Just so it doesn't jump out when I'm sewing. And I'll pop my foot aside. Now, I do have a bobbin thread in there. And I'm going to, even though I haven't got a foot on, I'm still going to put my foot down. Because the machine will tell me off if I don't. And then I'm going to, and you'll hear it makes a tick tick noise, and that's the the uh, fabric. So I'm just going to turn it down a bit. I've got it on auto stitch, so I don't want it going 100 mile an hour. And you can see it still stitches fine. It does jump a little bit. That's what the foot does. It actually keeps it keeps it uh, still. So I might actually put the foot back on. It's starting to shred a bit too. So I might put the foot back on and because it suits this machine. And every machine is going to be a little bit different. I didn't like that much at all, did it? Try again. That could have been um, the amount of layers that were going through, was going through at once. Okay, so now my foot, foot is down and I've got the foot back on. Um, I'm just going to grab that bottom thread just for my first initial start and just keep that out of the way. Do a couple of stitches. Looking forward just to lock that off. I'll just trim that out of the way. It's only going to be a nuisance. If I could see it, that'd be great. Okay, so if my bobbin starts coming through, I might need to check my tension. And you'll see, I tend to run along the line of the, the picture first, and I will create a definition. And I'll work with the, uh, with this one, I'm going to work with the um, shape of the tree. So I can see in my photo, I'm not sure if you can see it on the uh, camera, but I can see in my photo that I do have a definite shape in there, even though there's lots of leaves. And then because I like to see what I'm doing, I'll come back where I can see. And to be completely honest with you, I might just turn it down a fraction. It's a bit fast for, for what I'm doing. And you can see, I can't see, I like an open toe foot on this too, and I didn't have one on. Um, I'm outlining the gaps in between, so I'm not actually stitching over that as yet. And I'm going to come down here, and you can see I've gone past the actual base of the tree. I don't know if you can see that there, the base of the tree is about here and that's shadow. So I am going to go and stitch across there and I will work that in with a different colour as well. It just gives me the knowledge knowing that most of my tree is here and I will change that, I'll go back over that and change that so it's um, not looking like the tree is coming from the bottom of the whole picture. So again, sorry is the base of that tree is here so I like to see where I'm going and, and this is a slow process it's not quick at all a um, little bit at a time and you can see my pace is reasonably steady And I'm not going all the way up into those little areas yet. I'm just getting a uh, definition of the tree trunks because I just want to have a starting point.
there's a gap in between there where the sunlight's coming through. I wouldn't stitch over that, I'd let that stay. So once you actually get a bit of an outline of where the trees are going, then it's a matter of um, filling in with this darker one. I do also have a blue, which I'll grab, um, sort of like a deep blue, which will add a little bit of uh, colour in it as well without putting black in. And I've also got a really dark brown, which I'm going to add in as well. And there goes uh, your extra colours and, and that'll really give it some, uh, some body and, and uh, emphasis. Um, now, in saying that, it's very hard to see from the photo and the printout where the darkened lights are. So you do have to imagine yourself what's happening in the, in the photo uh, with this one specifically. Obviously the sun is behind it and it's coming up towards, uh, like through the actual tree. So the majority of it is going to be all really, really quite dark uh, uh, threads. but the way to get the texture and the shape of the tree in rather than having a big black blob is to put those um, uh, extra colours in that are still in the darker tones but they're not black. So I'm just going to keep going. I can see that there's a lighter brown there so I'm going to go around it. And sometimes um, when doing this I'll ad lib a little which is a bit of artistic license which is always lovely. I do like my artistic license. And you see I'm just colouring in. Um, my hands are fairly steady, it's back and forward motion. Sometimes you go around the corners and put a bit of curve on it. If you were doing animal hair, you would make sure that you stay within the curve of the animal hair so that it didn't look unusual. Strange, his hair's going the wrong direction. Um, the one I did with the tree trunks, I made sure that the wood was going in the right direction. You can see I'm just slowly but surely following all those little lines. I'll travel backwards and forwards to get from one point to the other. It's no problem. Because when I go to do the leaves, all those leaves, I'm not going to do them with a straight stitch. I'm going to do a zigzag on those. I'll show you that um, shortly. I want to show you um, a breakdown of colour. faster I move my hands, the bigger the stitch. Oh, she's having a bit of a moment, a shame. I don't know if anyone knows my machine. They've seen me video quite a few times using her, but she's she's been well and truly used. And uh, sometimes yells at me. So I'm hoping she's going to be a good girl. Well, I can't see any branches really there, so I'm just sort of making them up. And I want to travel over here. And you see I'm going through some of those bushy sort of areas, which is okay as well, because when I go over with my zigzag, that will get covered over. So I hope you can see that um, I'm detailing those lines and what it actually does. Going in. I need to try 
travel up, I just do, because like I said before, I'll be able to cover that over with my zigzag. I'm just going to cut off there and I'm going to go over and go up here. Little, little tiny lines like spider veins that need to be stitched if I can. I don't know what's jumping on my fin there. <laughs> And you can see I normally go over a couple of times, not normally just one run. Just so it gives it some thickness. Otherwise it wouldn't look anything different than the print. I've almost uh, <clears throat> done one side, I've got a little bit more to do. Bit of ad living. And before I move on to any other colour, I will trim all those jump threads that I've got there because um, I don't really want to stitch them into the next colour. I jump around a bit, and that's okay. So I still get to do the other colours, and um, they will come into the picture nicely.
Okay, so what I'll do, oh, I've got a little bit more. What I'll do is uh, once I've done this little bit here, I'm going to change colour. So I will finish this off and be back to you shortly. So I've changed thread and now I'm just adding a bit of a contrast in darker colours. I'm really just trying to follow where I was before, but right next to it. It can be a bit difficult when everything looks the same. <laughs> That's a bit of practice. And if you do tend to make something not look quite right, don't stress. You would never unpick it. You'd be more inclined to go over it with um, your other threads later. see just adding that one colour makes a bit of a difference between the silvery colour and that mauvey purpley colour. You can see them, gives it a bit of texture, a bit of contrast. So I'm going to work towards myself. I'm just going to fill in Just change the bobbin. I'll be back in a sec. <clears throat> okay. Change the bobbin. Hopefully she behaves. Yeah, making that popping noise. That's um, because I'm going over a lot of thread, and it tends to create a popping noise. Don't panic about that. of that with the mauve. I'm just going to do a little bit up here and a little bit outside and then I'm going to change sort of mauve is it really? It's a deep plum and then I'm going to change again. You do tend to do a lot of swap and change when you're doing this. I try and get all one colour done at once and then go to the other but sometimes you do have to go back and just touch up certain areas, which is fine. There's no rush. was coming from the top of the uh, photo, not so much a sunset but um, during the day, then I would have, I would be working to have the darker colour underneath and the lighter colours on top to indicate the shadowing. 
fairly important because you don't want to muck up your shadowing. You see I'm putting in a few extra branches here and there. A bit of, bit of ad living going on. So I'll trim these off and uh, I will change my thread and I'm going to go to a browner colour and I'm not going to use a lot of it, I'm just going to um, go over where I have been but just adding another colour. Okay, so now I'm adding in a brown but it's still a darker colour and you'll see I do have some lighter browns in there so I will actually be adding in sort of a golden brown that thread's going to get in my way so I'm going to trim that off out of my way excuse my hands and I'm really just touching on what I've already done I'm not um, filling in a lot just to Add that extra colour in. You don't want to make it boring and just all black and white. You know, I can do that. So I don't know if you can see that. Let's see how it um, just adds in a bit of texture to the tree. going to go over what I've already been. You can see I'm getting thready because it's starting to pull a little bit. It's taken a lot of thread for it to get to that point. So I hear it tap tap tap. Like I said I'm not going to go overboard. And then once I've done a little bit of highlighting with this one there to go by but if you want to change some of it go for your life just make sure that fill that little section in so you can see a little line happening looks like I've got a thread loose but it's not so I'm just going to come down this side I can see a thread there sometimes I need the right light to see them starting to take shape, it's starting to look more like a tree in the sunset. Okay, well I've got that colour in. Um, me, I like to do all the areas of that colour and although they look black in the base of this, they're more in the dark browns and even dark greys so I'm going to do those while I'm here. And as you can tell, I'm going in the actual uh, direction of the photo. So being backwards and forwards this way, I'm going this way. I'm not going little back that way. Can you press pause? Okay, so I'm just going backwards and forwards because that's the direction of the, the photo, as I said. And I'm filling in, I don't know if you can see that there, but I've filled in that little tree way in the background. So that's filled in. I'm going to go up here and do that one there. So I'll travel up and I'm 
going backwards and forwards for the simple reason that I've really got to make it look like a tree rather than... I don't want it to be satiny stitch. I'm sort of um, filling in, a bit like colouring in. So I'll move away and I can see what I'm doing. That's why an open toe foot would be better in this. I used an open toe foot and it's nice. And you can see there a little bit of the, the bobbins coming through. I'm not overly worried because I'm going to come back in with a different colour there and it'll cover that over. In this, is the shadows in the grasses. So I go along a little bit, up and down, travel along, and just put them an outline. And like I said, I'll go over that with the yellows, so it's not really a big deal if I have this little line squiggling across there. I can break that up a bit later. See, see how it's starting to take shape? And again here, this one's a little bit darker than the other one, so I might actually end up putting in some of that deep mauve one underneath. I'm going to do the top of it in this while I've got it in. And then I'm going to jump along here and just do those little sections. I like colouring in because if you have a pencil in your hand you squiggle along and you're getting those little details in without even really trying. And you see I had a bit of a jump there which you know happens because we're concentrating and we sort of jolt around a bit sometimes and um, that's okay because if you do do that, it's not something you can't undo. Like I said before, you can go back over with your darker orange or your next colour and cover that in. So you can see how it's starting to create a bit more there. So again, this has got like a, I can see the run of a line through it. So I'm going to colour it in. Bit like colour, you know, paint with numbers. All you're doing is selecting your colours that you're going to use. Come down there because I think I need to use a little bit more of that purpley colour in there. I'm going to travel up under here and I'm going to come up there because I want to catch those. And you can see I'm doing some little rough ziggy zaggy sort of things. This is not using the zigzag stitch, it's still a straight stitch, but it's. Um, giving me that nice uh, zigzag -zag look, messy, which is um, what this thing looks like really, doesn't it? So again, here, what I'm going to do is because I had accidentally gone over, you can see I went over the shadow, I want to go crossways just to break the difference up in the base of the tree, and I'm going to go back and forwards on a different angle just to give it the angle of the shadow because obviously the sun is coming across on that angle you can see from the other shadow so back and forwards fill that in okay and then I might actually I'll make it jagged between the two so it sort of blends a bit better and then I might actually throw some of that deep plummy colour in. And you can see it becomes more like a shadow than it was before. I think I need to meet up with it in here. There. And then I'm going to travel over here and go into the next one. And you might look at it and go, well, brown's just not the right colour. But I'm actually going to add in different colours shortly, like that plum and that. Um, Gray, but not a lot of them like I have in the trees. I'm going to try and keep it more, uh, more in the tones that the ground is. Yeah. And if 
you look at the way the shadow runs, it runs along in that direction, so I'm actually running the stitch in that direction to give it a bit of life. And I'm making that go up into the trunk, blend them in without overdoing it. I don't want to overdo it. And I'm going to turn it so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to come along this way. And then I'm going to start on those. Because once the shadow runs out, I've then got these little bits of grasses. And looking at them, I could probably even use some of that really deep blue. See, I'm not filling every single inch of it. I'm leaving gaps in between, so it gives it the um, illusion. You can see the photo behind it. I'm going to turn it around this way so I can see where I'm going. I'm going to leave those and come back to them. Excuse me. And I'm going to come up here because this line here that's actually a fence. So you'll see. is actually going on the other side so I'm going to cut off and come over there and follow on with that. And as soon as I see the fence, I'll just line backwards and forwards just to fill that in. So can you see that taking shape there? I can all see you nodding and, and yes. Okay, so you can see I've left a bit of this one here because I think I need to put some of that bluey colour in. So I'm just going to change my thread and swap over. Okay, so I've changed over to the blue. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm starting up in the shadow. I'm going to drag the blue through here. I do need to get rid of that little tail. So I'm bear with my hand in the way. There we go. And because I'm dragging it from the shadow, it'll just blend in. And mind you, even though it looks like a really bright blue, once I put that grey next to it, it'll um, soften up. And you can see I'm not going in all of those dark lines because I want to leave some for the grey areas. Some of that in here, just a little, just so it doesn't look like it's out of place. What you don't want to do is outline the tree in a black line, and make it look like a cartoon. Okay, it still leaves me room for the other grey. And I'll start in here. 
we get in here. Okay, from that shadow, still pulling it down. Traveling along the bottom line, getting the colour in there. Even when I did my trees, the burnt trees um, from after the fire, I didn't have everything black. I actually had it in a really deep, deep uh, brown, and although I did it fairly simplified, um, it's still better than just a black. Um, I think just a black on its own can look rather stark. And I'm just going to put a little bit in here. Just on that line. Cut off. Paint up my threads. I think that's enough blue and um, you might stop and start and change your mind and add more in later but for now um, you can see I've got a little bit of a gap between there, but again, I've got that grey and um, I'm going to swap over and use that one now. Okay, so I've just changed to the silvery colour. And again, I'm only going to highlight. It's really there for highlighting, um, highlights and lowlights, just to add in a bit of extra colour. And I can see that the one I just did then, this one here, it looks too too neat. Um, there shouldn't be that definite line there, so I'm going to mix it up a little bit and scribble over the top and blend it in. See how that looks a bit, a bit more blended? So it is very hard to see the stop and start of where the tree bases are um, and it doesn't really matter if it, you can't see them, um, it's nice to see the difference but it's no biggie if you can't. In the middle there and if I go backwards and forwards hopefully with a bit of luck it might give the illusion of it going between one part of the tree and the other. Um, and once I trim it up it'll probably look nicer and then I can bring that colour, drag it in there. So it looks like it's coming between the trees, behind them, coming in behind there. And this one here, bring it in here. Ending. And that helps with that brightness of that blue as well. You know, it's, you sort of want to just tone it down a little. And you join them up. Because they are joined up in the photo. You just work along slowly and steady. And again, that one looks like it's got two different lines, so I'll just. Give them a bit of a rough up. Get a bit of texture back and forth, nice and quick. Swing her around. Bring that down. And I'm going to come here because I think I need to just, I might come this way because it looks more like grasses than it does anything else. So I'm going to come up in the direction that it's going so it doesn't look like um, I've made the tree furry. I'll come over here and put some in there as well. If you want a unison from one side to the other.
Now, <clears throat> I might actually pop some of that in there because I've got some on the other side. So I'm just going to run another one. And I'll probably throw in a, another colour of it later. You can see here, there's some little bits in the background. I want to fill them. I want those trees to sort of be there. I don't want to just stitch over the top of them. I want them to be there so it gives me um, the, the depth of the photo. Okay, so again I'm going to change my thread and I'm going to change it to the um, the orangey tones now and you'll probably be surprised with what I choose but um, when you do yours you can choose your colours so um, I'll be back in a minute once I cut these threads and change change the uh, the reel of thread I'm going to use okay so now I've popped in a, a colour that's sort of a brownie tone sort of goldeny colour um, and I am going to come in in all these areas but I am also going to chuck in a bit of an apricot colour in here because I can see that in between but I'll, um, I'll do that with a zigzag later. First things first I want to do uh, the straight stitching so the zigzag comes last. So I'm going to start outside things so I can cut off my thread again. Stitch it in maybe even. There we go, stitched in. And what I like to do is outline the edge of that. And like I said before, if you've got a open toe, it does work better for you um, when you're trying to do fine detail like that. Now I'm not going to go along the whole top of that in that colour. It needs to change halfway across. As you can see, the colour of the sky changes, it's got to change as well. So I'm just going to fill that in, like colouring in a picture like I said earlier. And once I've got that sorted, I'll go to the next area. You can see it's starting to take shape. I've officially got a creative license, <laughs> I can change it anyway. And so can you. So I'm doing all the straight ones first. some of the areas I'll actually miss and I'll purposely miss them because I want them to be there after the fact. I think Dottie's falling asleep. The shadow behind those grasses. Let's see. Later. Now if you find that your thread keeps breaking all the time you might need to actually slow down even more. I can see this, this colour seems to be shredding a little bit so fingers crossed I can beat it. Again, I'm going to blend that blue in by blending in that brown into it. And because my machine slowed down, I have. And you can see that bit of thread there that's getting in my way. I am effectively 
easily stitching into it. So you see how now she's starting to blend a bit more. So the breakup of those colours really works. But you are going to need quite a few colour ranges and they might only be one or two shades darker or lighter than each other. Um, but that does make a difference in the whole scheme of things. So I'm sort of done there. I might actually put a little bit above there. And because that's sort of grassy, I'm going to go up and down. Without it looking silly, of course. Just trim those off and then I'll go the other side. I like to trim as I go. I've got my big hand in the way. And I can see that up. I'm going to do that little bit in the middle there. But I'm going to leave a little bit for the apricot. Because even though that looks like an orange, it's. Um, more apricotty than orange. These are just shadows from the fencing. around the fencing but I'm still going in the same direction so back and forwards to fill around those trees Been, whether I need to do more there and I think that's okay there and I might just put a little bit in here back and forwards fill in between travel down on the side if you need to just to get in between there where you need to go it's nothing for me to stop foot up Sorry, needle up, where's my needle up there, and then travel over like that. I've done that many, many times. So if you feel more comfortable doing that, you can do it that way. Keeps your stitches in nice and firm. will appear quite bright when I first start but I will work um, blend it in and, and tone it down I'm still working in those directions that see before. I want to make sure that I still go in that direction. My body just got a jolt. <laughs> it wasn't me, I didn't kick up. <laughs> Alright, I might have kicked it under the table, but don't tell anyone. Okay, so I'm thinking I might need to change it into a, into a bit of an apricot toning in here. So I'm going to do that right now and change my thread. I'll be back in a second. 
Okay, so I just done a little stitch there just to test it. So if it was nice and small, if I needed to um, go over it, it's only a small area to go over. But I actually like that. It really comes in there. I'm also going to pop in some oranges too, which will help um, make that colour seem like it's meant to be there and not look like something that shouldn't be there. So I am going to travel with it. I'm just sort of going to jump over to certain areas because I am going to go over the highlight with the oranges I'll be able to colour those, uh, sorry, um, cover those in quite easily but you can see the areas, um, the sections that are that brighter colour I'm now colouring in Moving up here, working way up in here and don't be frightened to, to travel a bit, it's um, perfectly normal when you do quilting is to travel and you can see how that's really giving it some extra texture and uh, colour, you know, the sunsetty colours. Sorry, I'm going to just trim that off. I'm going to come in from the side and just highlight in those areas, even though it's not quite the same colour as the picture. I think that it will really be quite pretty and give it my own touch. Because um, that's what art's about. You know, this is a this is a form of art, and, and it's nice to be able to put your own touch on it and not just do exactly what someone else has done. It's, um, to say yes, okay, I used I used that photo, but I ad-libbed and, and made it my own. And with enough change that you can really tell and say, oh look, I changed the colours to suit myself because, you know, I like these colours better than the colours that were in the photo or in the picture. But, um, you know, if you don't want to, you can just do exactly what's in the photo. Um, either way is fine, there's no right and wrong with it and um, it's just what you prefer. Once you've got a bit of confidence you might do a bit more of your own ad-libbing. It just depends on uh, how you go and your confidence levels and stuff. And like I say, no quilting police allowed. So. see that it's taking shape with this little colour that's really adding a bit of a highlight in. I hope you can see that developing. from one side to the other. I'm not blending. I don't want to stand it too much. Oh no, I don't need to. I'm just looking at it. That's why I'll throw in some of the oranges. Um, I don't want it too bright, of course. I know there is a bright orange there, but that's more for the sky. Um, but I'll throw in some oranges. Goldy colours to help blend in some of these colours. Otherwise, it's a bit black and white, really. Nothing blending. I 
Okay, so I'm looking at it. I might just pop a little bit on this side just so they marry up on either side. Um, and I might just put a, a little bit here. Not that I have to, just because, again, like I said, that ad living thing, make it my own. I might jump across here. In between there. It just looks like it's meant to have that colour now. Come across here. Blending. When I blend, I go back and forwards, and I, I tend to go into the previous colours just to help it bleed in. Okay, so again, I'm going to change my thread because I think I need to go into the goldens color, or golden colours. I'm going to trim my threads in a second, and I'll be back to carry on. Okay, so now I've changed to this sort of goldy colour. So it's got a sort of almost like a greeny gold to it. And it's going to, again, give me some more texture and balance and colour into it. And again, I'm not going over every single inch. I don't want to go over every single inch. I want to leave some of the the colour from the actual photo in the background, you can see that's the colour there and because of all the oranges it tends to look gold, uh, greeny, it is a goldy colour and I will blend it in like I did before. So that's got to go <laughs> and then I'm going to leave that yellow visible but I think I need to put that goldy greeny colour in those trees so without it being an actual green it's still got that bronzy sort of look to it so that in and I will even though I'm not going to put the yellow in the bottom part I will actually put it in this top part because I think it'll be a bit silly to do the tops of all those and then leave that out that would be a bit funny whereas that doesn't look unusual in between there Oops -a -days. okay so I'm going to just put that on there be very close to the tree, right up to it, gives it that definition. And just for colour's sake, I'll add a little bit into the bottom part so it doesn't look out of place. You can see it's sort of really giving it some shape. shadowing and you'll notice that it really looks different once you put it with the blue which is fine just if you ever look at I was just saying to dot it off the camera if you ever look at water most people sort of say if you ask them what colour water was or the sky was you'd say blue well there is a bit of blue in them but the majority of it is all different colours so you need to look at something and go well you know, water has greens and purples and dark browns and all sorts of different colours in it and it's never black and white you know the sky is not always just blue it does have creams and whites and greys and all sorts of wonderful colours in it and and all those together as a a mixture is what creates the, the beauty of it so if you can grab that into thread and pull it into your, your piece of artwork you know you've sort of mastered it and you do do a bit of auditioning with your thread I'll just take a quick look at 
this and see where I'm up to. I need to do a bit up in there and maybe a bit along there and, and then I need to change colour. listen to it before um, but she works well works hard for me okay a little bit up this end just along that fence A judgment call and I think I'd be happy with that being finished in the in the bottom there and I'm about to do all the trees now so I'll um, trim these off and I will get back to you once I've got my thread changed okay so what I've done now is I've changed my machine to a zigzag and I've put it down to about 1.5 on the width because I only want a small little zigzag um, now with this you do lots of little jiggy sort of motions, sort of circular and jagged motions and you'll um, see that happen. Um, I do need to speed up a little bit to do this. And you'll see it creates another texture and I am leaving gaps purposely because I do want to fill it in with another colours um, one being a really nice um, olivey green dark one and this gives a great rendition of leaves and shrubs too you're getting too um, satin stitchy I suppose and you need to change direction it's a really good way to fill up as well if you want to fill an area quickly it's really quite good goes in all different directions you can see I don't go in the same direction all the time swap from one to the other and then at the start it'll look a little bit mishmashy but it will take shape once you do the highlights. just run out so I'll just change that for you I'll be back in a sec If you can see my hands, I'm doing lots of little 
sharp movements in different directions. My elbows are down and my arms are down, so I'm not sitting there with my wings up. So I'm a lot more relaxed. is too, you don't want it too rigid either when you're doing this infill, you want to <coughs> sort of, you know, leaves sort of stick out and little branches and all sorts of things and you just want to follow that lead from Mother Nature. And the beauty of this is you can jump around, like a, Pulling a bit of this. And I will end up um, coming back over to some of this as well with another colour just to blend in some different tones. You don't want it all one colour looking grey. Just no matter how dark and one colour it looks, there's actually more than one in there. There's a couple of colours and of course we want to add that little bit of artistic license and create our own version of our sunset. talking and saying that this thread, even though it's like a um, more like a gunmetal grey, in the camera it's showing up like a bright blue. So if you know that when it's finished it's actually a grey. Um, but it's gonna be interesting to see how it shows up on camera, not too sure. Might be a case of seeing if we can take a photo and adjust it accordingly. making the edges of the trees look like they're perfectly you know, rounded because trees aren't. And I'm adding a few little leaves and branches in and 
all these cracking it. Um, as I go, just to add a bit of character. And I keep turning it because I want to actually see where I'm going. It's nice to see what you're doing. And to help highlight it, I will go in between with um, that goldy orangey colour and bring up the highlights in between of the sunset behind it. So you can, um, it'll really accentuate the, the tree, the darkness, and the lights. Now, another tip with this is if you pull too hard and too fast, you will break your needle. Um, it's not a matter of when, but uh, if, but when it is. Um, it's pretty normal to break a needle or two while doing this because you do put a lot of pressure on your, on your needle um, jumping around like this. Um, and that's perfectly okay. Just do what you normally do and change it over and get on with it. I tend to use um, um, you know, the superior needles, the titanium ones, because they withstand a little bit more of a beating. And I tend to do that with things a bit of a beating on you know, the sewing machine and needles. Remember, if there's something you've, you've stitched and you don't like it and you want to change it, you, you can always go over it with the next colour. Or, um, you know, just travel back up and give it a little bit more thread. And the ones here in the background, behind the tree, is sort of... Stop and cut off because I actually want to come up here, but without a whole heap of. I don't want a big zigzaggy line. Um, so I'm just going to sort of jump around here just to bring the leafage into it. And again, I don't want to run a big zigzag up there, so I am going to stop and. Still keeping with that motion that I had before because you know I want it to look scruffy looking like a tree would. <laughs> Fill in some gaps. And I'll just pause here. Are you heading off home? actually finish all the colours and um, get some structure about the leaves. They're sort of going to look a bit mishmashy. Um, but uh, they are starting to take shape. I've got too much gap here so I'm going to go fill that up. Okay, 
So I'm going to go and change my thread because I think it's time to put a little colour in there. Looks very much like a tree. So I'm going to throw in a green, olive green, and this is going to be my highlight. So it'll be a lot of stop starting um, because I'll be doing bits and pieces. Just cut that off. That'll avoid my big tail. Okay, so I'm going to use this olive green and um, it's going to appear quite bright but um, I'm only going to do it in the highlighting areas and um, we'll see why. Again, lots of little movements. It's just accenting what I've already done without it looking like I'm overdoing it. So I'll move it across. Um, I'm basically creating a break in between the, the branches and you know, the, the bushels of leaves, I suppose, or the, or how else to explain it. See there, I've got a bit of a straight line going there. I don't want that, so I will go back in and muscle up a bit and make it not so obvious. If I want something to be really bright, I'll sit on one spot for a second and do a bit of a satiny stitch. Um, like I said before, I don't want to overdo it either. So it is a lot of stop start, a lot of jumping around, which is fine. It's very easy to cut these threads. And the nice thing is when you've done it, you've created your own little embroidery. It's really free motion embroidery when you think about it. And um very effective. photo they're quite dark areas. I want to sort of highlight the graduation of the change of colours. So it's like I said earlier it's not going to all be black and white and blue and grey. It's going to be all different colours. Be the only green I put in it. If I need any of the stems to go over the top of the green, I'll do them afterwards at the end just to um, show that they're in front of the, the leaves. But stressed about that. I think they'll just blend in nicely.
Schweine. stitched it in because um, I didn't really want that light grey white colour there. See where I need to go. Probably need to do a little bit more in here just to even up the, the sides. So I think that's enough green and I'm going to now trim all that and change my thread over. So I've now changed to a goldy colour and you'll see why in a minute. Um, because this is my true highlights. And you'll see them taking shape. And like before, it's little bits. It's the edges of the tree where the sun hits. Lots of stop starting, lots of cutoffs. Because you're doing mainly around the edge, you tend to finish it fairly quickly. It's not it'll take you hours to do one little bit. See, it's got that nice goldy colour, but not too bright like a bright yellow would be. And 
And the thing is too, you don't sort of want to go all the way around the tree and make it look like a halo. It sort of comes in from underneath. Sorry about that Bean, that's my husband cutting wood. <laughs> So you can see I'm going in between, just picking up on those little areas and there are only a few stitches here and there just to pick up on them. I'll try and talk over the wood, wood colour outside. <laughs> and um, it could literally be one or two stitches or a zigzag. It's okay to leave some areas unstitched, like I said earlier. It's um, sort of adds to the creativity of it. sort of work around from one side to the other. There's no real master plan other than to look where the next highlight is and fill it in. And I think that um, it might need some of that apricotty colour. Um, like the, the ground is reflecting up which is nice. I think that's, I mean there's a little bit more on that side, I might pop a little bit more on this side just to even it out a bit, I don't want to bite the sun's on one side of the tree and not the other, so it needs to look like it's behind. So I'm going to swap over to that apricot colour again and um, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so I was going to put an apricot but I changed my mind because uh, once I put it up against it I decided it was going to be too bright and I wanted it to be a little bit more subtle. 
So I'm using a coppery brown and I'm going in between those areas I did before and creating some new areas. So you can see that that's starting to really give those bushels of tr uh, like stems of leaves some real shape. Okay, the highlights. Again, I don't want to overdo it, but I do want to get build up the texture of it. And I'm still inclined to actually put another darker through the which I probably should have done a bit earlier, but that's okay. So I finished with a zigzag and we're almost out of battery on the um, memory on the uh, movie cam so I've just jumped ahead and I'm doing a straight stitch now to do the sky. You can see that I am literally jumping areas and leaving big gaps um, and there's a reason for that because I want the background to come through. I don't want to take it over. so. Literally back and forward, nice and simple. Okay, so I've changed colours about four times, and um, I'm just up to the last little bit. Um, slowly bleeding it in all straight stitches but back and forward into some nice zigzag motions uh, not zigzag straight back and forward motions I should say um, I don't want it to look too structured I just about did it in uh, and I will just trim that off I'm going to show you what I've got so far but I think I need to put a bit of that purpley one in there and then that's my last one so I'll quickly do that before we run out of memory on our card okay so it's a lot darker than what has been there but I'm going to just bleed it in I'll 
take a photo of the finished product and you can see what it looks like. A little bit more over here. Okay, so today I'm going to discuss a bit of thread painting and I like to do it where I have um, a picture behind it, a photo. As you can see, um, I've got a photo printed out on photo paper and then I have, photo fabric, sorry, and then I've uh, stitched over the top to create a bit of added texture. Um, I've also added on it a stabiliser, it's like a, um, a uh, handbag stabiliser bag batting and you can see I've just you know I'm going to back it with something else but um, it gives it a lot of, of texture and you can see all the shadows still in the uh, in the water so today what I'm going to do is discuss how this process works so first things first you print out on your photo paper uh, depending on what size you have Okay, so once you've got your printable fabric, which is a, it's like a fabric on one side and shiny on the other, and that's, that's protecting it so that it can go through the uh, printer, and you literally take that off, they can hear my cat in the background, you can, you take that off after you've printed it, it prints on this side, as you can see I started printing and then cancelled, so I can print over that again another time, and then you print out your photo, you take that plastic off and then I stitched it down on some bag batting just loosely like a basting stitch around the edge just to hold it flat and it means that um, any bobbin that I use is pretty much not going to come up to the top unless I really adjust my tensions and it means that you've got some really good stabiliser there it's not going to bubble and carry on as you can see this is quite flat this one here I crunched it up the other day in my bag but it is quite flat and um, and with an iron it'll come out even nicer uh, you can practice on the side if you cut out your bag batting a little bit um, a little bit bigger so that you can see how you want to make the stitches look the main two stitches I use are a straight stitch and a zigzag stitch so I tend to look at the photo and I think okay well what I'm going to start with first and I normally start with the darkest part of it first so the first part I'm going to start with is the trees and I'm going to do those lines and shadows in here I'm most likely going to do a little bit of a sky but I'm going to keep it um, almost original to the photo just so that it, it sort of brings that colour through um, I don't want to sort of lose the, the texture of the photo either so first things first is to audition your, your threads and if I just move over here a fraction you can see I've got quite a few fre threads threads, threads that I've chosen um, they might not look right when you look at them now but once you place them on they tend to blend in you'll see that they come blend in or come close and then you've got the the charcoal grey and you can see that that's going to blend in nicely as well so I do that with each and every colour so that I can get choose all these colours I need low lights and highlights and I need some ones in the middle as well just to give it a bit of um, a bit of texture and a bit of colour like this one here I've got low lights I've got highlights and then I've got ones that are in the middle same with the greens low lights and highlights and you can see in here too okay so what I'll do and these are unknown photographers I did um, print them out a while ago and I can't remember who they are um, 
just remember that if you ever do any artwork to always acknowledge who you've got the photo from or picture from so that you're uh, not um, interfering with their, their income and their and uh, copyright laws. So first things first I'm going to go with this grey really deep dark grey and you notice I'm not really doing black um, because black is a shade not a colour same with white my highlights are most likely going to be in this sort of colouring or this one okay so I've got my machine set up for free motion quilting which means my feed dogs are down my foot is a free motion foot you can take your foot off I can show you how to do that as well and just have it um, free floating and I also t um, adjust my tension up to around about five so if I'm going to take my foot off I might need my little screwdriver because I did overdo it earlier if I've left it in here I'll go find my screwdriver and I'll be right back okay so I found the screwdriver I'm just going to tighten that back up. I don't know if you can see there that my arm's in the way. Just so it doesn't jump out when I'm sewing. And I'll pop my foot aside. Now I do have a bobbin thread in there. And I'm going to, even though I haven't got a foot on, I'm still going to put my foot down. Because the machine will tell me off if I don't. And then I'm going to, and you'll hear it makes a tick tick noise. And that's the the uh, fabric so I'm just going to turn it down a bit I've got it on auto stitch so I don't want it going a hundred mile an hour and you can see it still stitches fine it does jump a little bit that's what the foot does it actually keeps it keeps it uh, still so I might actually put the foot back on it's starting to shred a bit too so I might put the foot back on and because it suits this machine and every machine is going to be a little bit different I didn't like that much at all did it try again that could have been um, the amount of layers that were going through was going through at once okay so now my foot foot is down and I've got the foot back on um, I'm just going to grab that bottom thread just for my first initial start and just keep that out of the way do a couple of stitches looking forward just to lock that off I'll just trim that out of the way it's only going to be a nuisance if I could see it that'd be great Okay, so if my bobbin starts coming through, I might need to check my tension. And you'll see, I tend to run along the line of the, the picture first, and I will create a definition. And I'll work with the, uh, with this one, I'm going to work with the um, shape of the tree. So I can see in my photo, I'm not sure if you can see it on the uh, camera, but I can see in my photo that I do have a definite shape in there, even though there's lots of leaves. And then because I like to see what I'm doing, I'll come back where I can see. And to be completely honest with you, I might just turn it down a fraction. It's a bit fast for, for what I'm doing. And you can see, I can't see, I like an open toe foot on this too, and I didn't have one on. Um, I'm outlining the gaps in between, so I'm not actually stitching over that as yet. And I'm going to come down here, in, and you can see I've gone past the actual base of the tree. I don't know if you can see that there, the base of the tree is about here and that's shadow. So I am going to go and stitch across there and I will work that in with a different colour as well. It just gives me 
the knowledge knowing that most of my tree is here and I will change that. I'll go back over that and change that so it's um, not looking like the tree is coming from the bottom of the whole picture. So again, sorry, is the base of that tree is here. So I like to see where I'm going. And this is a slow process. It's not quick at all. Um, a little bit at a time. And you can see my pace is reasonably steady. And I'm not going all the way up into those little areas yet. I'm just getting a uh, definition of the tree trunks because I just want to have a starting point. sunlight's coming through. I wouldn't stitch over that. I'd let that stay. So once you actually get a bit of an outline of where the trees are going, then it's a matter of um, filling in with this darker one. I do also have a blue, which I'll grab, um, sort of like a deep blue which will add a little bit of uh, colour in it as well without putting black in and I've also got a really dark brown which I'm going to add in as well and there goes uh, your extra colours and, and that'll really give it some uh, some body and, and uh, emphasis. Um, now in saying that it's very hard to see from the photo and the printout where the dark and lights are so you do have to imagine yourself what's happening in the, in the photo. Uh, with this one specifically. Obviously the sun is behind it and it's coming up towards, uh, like through the actual tree. So the majority of it is going to be all really, really quite dark uh, uh, threads. But the way to get the texture and the shape of the tree in, rather than having a big black blob, is to put those um, uh, extra colours in that are still in the darker tones, but they're not black. So I'm just going to keep going. I can see that there's a lighter brown there, so I'm going to go around it. And sometimes um, when doing this, I'll kind of add lib a little, which is a bit of artistic license. So it's lovely. I do like my artistic license. And you see, I'm just colouring in. Um, my hands are fairly steady back and forward motion. Sometimes you go around the corners and put a bit of curve on it. If you were doing animal hair you would make sure that you stay within the curve of the animal hair so that it didn't look unusual. Strange, his hair's going the wrong direction. Um, the one I did with the tree trunks I made sure that the wood was going in the right direction. You can see I'm just slowly but surely following all those little lines. And I'll travel backwards and forwards to get from one point to the other. It's no problem. Because when I go to do the leaves, all those leaves, I'm not going to do them with a straight stitch. I'm going to use a zigzag on those. And I'll show you that um, shortly. I want to show you um, a breakdown of colour. The 
faster I move my hands, the bigger the stitch. Oh, she's having a bit of a moment. Good shame. Know if anyone knows my machine, they've seen me video quite a few times using her, but she's she's been well and truly used, and uh, sometimes yells at me. So I'm hoping she's going to be a good girl. So I can't see any branches really there, so I'm just sort of making them up. And I want to travel over here. And you see I'm going through some of those bushy sort of areas, which is okay as well, because when I go over with my zigzag, that will get covered over. So I hope you can see that um, I'm detailing those lines and what it actually does. do because like I said before I'll be able to cover that over with my zigzag. I'm just going to cut off there and I'm going to go over and go up here. Little, little tiny lines like spider veins that need to be stitched if I can. And you can see I normally go over a couple of times, not normally just one run. Just so it gives it some thickness. Otherwise it wouldn't look anything different than the print. I've almost uh, <clears throat> done one side, I've got a little bit more to do. Bit of ad living. And before I move on to any other colour, I will trim all those jump threads that I've got there because um, I don't really want to stitch them into the next colour.
I see I jump around a bit. That's okay. So I still get to do the other colours. And um, they will come into the picture nicely. Okay, so what I'll do, oh, I've got a little bit more. What I'll do is uh, once I've done this little bit here, I'm going to change colours. So I will finish this off and be back to you shortly. So I've changed thread and now I'm just adding a bit of a contrast and darker colours. I'm really just trying to follow where I was before, but right next to it. It can be a bit difficult when everything looks the same. <laughs> That's a bit of practice. And if you do tend to make something not look quite right, don't stress. You would never unpick it. You'd be more inclined to go over it with um, your other threads. see just adding that one colour makes a bit of a difference between the silvery colour and that mauvey purpley colour. You can see them, gives it a bit of texture, a bit of contrast. So I'm going to work towards myself. I'm just going to fill in Just change the bobbin, back in a sec. <laughs> 